connection for a while. I don't know exactly what happened, but maybe it's something having to do with the storm that is coming. So my apologies. Um, okay, I don't know how much <laughs> got recorded, how much did not, but let's just start from the message about Jesus calling his first disciples. Okay, always a good place to start is with Jesus. Okay, so here we are, Mark 1. Uh, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. What is so powerful about this scripture is that he was going to Peter. Peter's an ordinary guy. He's not a scholar. He's not fancy. He's not wealthy. He's just a regular guy, a fisherman. And yet Jesus goes to him and picks him out and says, you know, hey, you've been doing great with fishing until now. You've been blessed with your fishing. Um, it's been in your family dynasty, but it's time for something else. You're being repositioned. How great would it be if any of us were wondering about what should I do next in my life? Um, and then suddenly Jesus would give you like a very specific direction. Hey, leave that. That season is over. Come and follow me. Such an absolutely beautiful, uh, powerful redirection. Maybe you need that redirection right now because of some decision that you have to make. Like, for instance, yesterday we um, got a note from um, my daughter's, uh, one of the colleges that she was applying for. Um, and, you know, she has to make a big decision. What college to go to and it's confusing and it's hard especially these days we don't know if schools are going to be virtual still next year or not you know should she go away should she stay close um divine direction we all need that um so here are three points takeaway points from this scripture that i think would be very valuable for us number one are you perhaps clinging on to your comfort zone? It's hard. Like Peter, I could imagine that must have been very difficult for him to leave behind everything that he knew. Just even in terms of fishing, it's, it's his entire life. And to start something else. But we could get caught in a tunnel vision if we're not careful. Clinging on to what is comfortable, even if we're not happy, right? So that is the, an important point to know when to go, but when to stay. Because sometimes we think, oh, this is not working. We need to go. But maybe God is saying, no, you need to stay and you need to work that out, right? So number one, tunnel vision. Check your mindset. Number two, expand your vision. So they had just this fishing lifestyle that they knew. So day in, day out, they were working 16 hours you know, fixing the nets, and then they would cast the nets, and then they would fish and do everything they needed to do. However, could it be that uh, there's something more? So again, expand your vision to something else. Now, finally, number three, when you have... That guidance, you know for sure, okay, God is wants me out of this and into something new. I'm getting stale. This is not working anymore. I want to go into the next territory. Well, timing is everything in life. And uh, we often get divine guidance through signs and symbols, right? So dreams, for instance, could give us guidance. I know personally, I've always been a big believer in signs. I always thought that, okay, if I'm supposed to go this direction, 
God will give me a sign. So that used to be my uh, top way of knowing what I should do. And this really came in in a big way when I was thinking about marriage. And I'll tell you the story because it's a crazy story. Um, but my husband, Mark, and I just celebrated our 20th anniversary this past fall. But it's a unlikely story uh, because when we met back in uh, September, August, late August of 2000, um, we met and two weeks later, we decided we were going to get married. So our courtship was essentially two weeks and uh, we wanted to just quickly get married, like elope to Niagara. It was a very romantic, we're dreamers, romantic people and all this stuff. Not great um, if you're a parent, which God bless my parents for their patience. I always tell my kids, do as I say, not as I do. Don't take me as an example. But <laughs> anyway, I remember the night before we were supposed to get on the plane and elope to Niagara. I was starting to get cold feet. And I wondered, shouldn't we wait? This is insane. We're strangers. We know each other for only two weeks. How could this possibly be a good idea? And I was so um, sure that the next morning I would postpone the wedding. So I went to sleep and I had this like little studio apartment that I lived in and because I was living alone, I really had my little morning routine, which consisted of, well, I would wake up at nine because usually I went to bed at three you know how it is when you're 20 something. Um, so I would go to bed at three, wake up at nine. And then usually I would first put the TV on and see what was on the news, catch up what, what was happening in the world. So I went to bed that night. I said the next morning, I'm calling Mark up on the phone, postponing the wedding, going to take a time out, deep breath, uh, and just re rethink this whole thing and make a better plan. Have a real proper wedding down the road. But something was telling me, maybe that time wouldn't come again. You know, like if your train arrives, pulls up at the station, you have to get on. And if you don't, maybe it won't pull up again. So that was my thought. I said, well, maybe, hmm. But I was convinced. I went to bed the next morning. I woke up and I said, oh, I got to get on the phone. I have to call Mark. And it was like I had that horrible feeling in my stomach. Oh, that's going to be a tough call. I don't want to do that. Um, so, yes, dreams are interesting. So I wake up in the morning and my usual routine, I put the TV on. And what do I see? It was the Today Show. And once a year at that time, at least, the year 2000, they would have a featured wedding in their studio. And so, of course, that morning was the morning that I wake up to this wedding happening on the Today Show <laughs> on TV. So I said, oh, wow, um, hmm, that's uncomfortable. Let me change the channel. I don't want to think about weddings right now. Well, I changed the channel, and what do I see? The movie father of the bride uh is on with steve martin that version which is so funny but anyway um that's playing on tv i'm like oh my gosh another wedding thing and then i change the channel again and what do i see a commercial for david bridal three signs in a row and i know you know my thing is okay if there are three signs that's a go like don't mess around with, if you get three signs, you got to go. <laughs> so <laughs> needless to be said, got on the plane, eloped, and here we are um, almost 21 years later. Okay, so what was that about? Divine direction. I didn't know what to do, what direction to take. It seemed crazy, but those signs led me, gave me confidence because I wasn't relying on myself. I was relying on 
a power bigger than myself to know what the next move was for my life. So right now, as we start um, the prayer invitation and final, um, I'll play three pieces of music. And I would like to offer a prayer invitation right now. Uh, if you'd like anything, please write it in the chat. Um, and thank you for coming back. Thank you for everybody for your patience with the technical problems today. I so appreciate that. Um, if there are any particular prayer requests before we get into the closing part of the broadcast, please uh, feel free to come to the chat. Come to the chat. Come to the chat. Just write them in the chat and we'll lift them up. Um, Lord God, uh, right now we uh, feel particularly um, joyful that we have you that we don't need to rely on ourselves and our false sense of knowing. Sometimes thoughts are, are very powerful, but sometimes we could get lost in our thoughts and in the confusion of our thoughts. We know that the energy of our hearts is exponentially more powerful than even our thoughts. But Lord, you are the grand conductor. You harmonize our mind and our heart in a way that is supernatural. So right now, Lord, we are asking for that divine guidance to be heart-centered and also unified with our brain so that any decisions that we are struggling with right now, any concerns of our heart, any confusion, Lord, that you will align them. And Lord, we offer up this music and our prayers and our collective harmony right now as we pray, Lord, for you to lead us, for you to lead our world in, in a perfect solution, Lord, that would be good for everybody with the coronavirus, that we can all reunite, that we could be together again in your perfect timing and with safety. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you because... Your, like the word says, uh, take your yoke because your yoke is easy and the burdens are light. Help us not to carry around all these heavy burdens that weigh on our mind and cause us so much confusion, worry, and sleeplessness. Lord, let us give it to your throne of grace right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I'd like to play for you. It's not a hymn today, but it's close. <laughs> Anything by Bach is, uh, I think, praise music. And this is from his notebook. Isn't that so sweet? He wrote a notebook of piano pieces for his children. He had 20 children. So that's a lot of notebooks, but I don't think each one got a notebook. But one of them had a collection written by his father and uh, the son's name was Wilm Friedman Bach and one of the pieces in the notebook is this prelude in E minor and it's beautiful as is however it went through a lot of transformations as you will hear and so perhaps that's a metaphor. I, I thought it was just an interesting metaphor how we might be in the place we are right now and it's all good, but we are transformed in the blink of an eye into the next uh, best version of ourselves through God. So let's hear the first version of this beautiful prelude in E minor.
so that is uh, paired with the scripture Psalm 37. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. This piece had this mysterious and such a absolutely captivating part with the... Um, It's so fluid, it's so plastic, it's so mesmerizing. And so Bach used the concept that he presented here in many other, well, a couple of other forms. For instance, in his Well-Tempered Clavier. In E minor from book one, you will hear another presentation of this same idea. Um, on my YouTube channel, I am spending the year each month presenting two preludes and fugues through the book one. So um, if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel so that you can hear when the new ones are released. And they're so incredible because each one is in a different color because of the different key change and the way Bach really shows us the emotional depth of every key. It's so, so sublime, this music. Truly. So let's go back to that um, piece that we just heard. Now we're going to hear another version by another man named Alexander Zelati, an incredible person who uh, had such incredible richness of gifts. He was actually the first cousin of Rachmaninoff, and Zelati worked hand in hand with Tchaikovsky. He was a student, a beloved student of Franz Liszt, and he was just the most kind musician ever. Unfortunately, sometimes musicians are all fighting competitive for limited, perceived limited resources, but not Zelotti. He put others first. He personally um, promoted the careers of so many great players. Casals, the cellist, uh, for instance, um, Wanda Lankowski, even um, Diaghilev uh, and Stravinsky, they met because of one of Salati's networking events. So he was just a man that really put others first. And here you can, you can sense a bit of his ingenuity. This piece is... Um, now, he, taken from that E minor that we heard the prelude in, he rewrites it in B minor. A darker, more mysterious key. And um, what he does with it is sublime. This was a well-loved encore of the pianist Emil Gilles. And uh, we have this music, thankfully, because um, Salati left so many of his great arrangements behind. So here is his prelude in B minor by Johann Sebastian Bach and transcribed by Alexander Zilari. <laughs>
Isn't that such a beautiful piece of music? Absolutely sublime. Absolutely sublime. And it's interesting because it repeats twice. And the first time, the focus is on that filigree. And then the second time, you hear another voice emerge. And uh, again, another metaphor for life. Because any season, any season, something new can emerge. And I think for many of us, we can also say that even in this time of COVID, so many different voices emerge, like in this piece, so many different nuances. Maybe we've all reframed how we spend our time. Maybe we've reframed what is really important. Uh, new perspectives, just like this music tells us. Okay. So now I would like to close with another very special piece of music, and it is... Uh, the lyrics of this piece actually are um, related, completely inspired by the gospel message we heard about Jesus calling Peter. Come and I will send you to be a fisherman of men, fisher of men. And this is a piece of music that my mother told me about, and I was not familiar with it, but again, Another divine sign, um, and you had never heard this piece before, but she said, you know what, you really should hear it. It's um, one of John Paul II's favorite songs that he would sing. And so I, I listened to it and I was amazed because years ago I wrote a song and it was almost the same melody, which I thought, oh my gosh, how could that be? I never heard this before. So it just made me realize that we're all connected. We're all connected on a deeper level than we possibly realize. So as uh, we listen to uh, this song named Barca, um, I'm going to play uh, an improvisation based on that. And just close with a final um, a message from Psalm 21, verse 1 through 3, which says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So as we close... We thank because your word tells us that you lead us beside still waters, that we have peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding for all those that, that um, are hearing this prayer, Lord. Just bless us all with that supernatural peace, Lord. Bless us all with a supernatural discernment for next steps. And just like your word says, we stand on your promise because you deliver on your word all the time, Lord, that you lead us in the paths of righteousness. And we thank you because you are our good shepherd.
Okay, thank you so much for joining and please come again next week at noontime where we'll raise up some more prayer piano. Again, um, please come to the prayer wall for any special prayer requests and also don't forget to sign up for the um, very special giveaway prize. So God bless and thank you so much for listening.